That's why. Ah, uh, fuck. And that's why I didn't go heavy. Cause I already knew. All right, last set. So I low key lied. I said I wasn't gonna add any more weight, but <laughs> it's just the inner lifter in me. Like, uh, don't feel like you have to go super heavy to work out. But whatever you decide, I want you guys to realize that that is why you are or are not seeing the results that you desire. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Friday, you guys. We made it to the end of the week. Woot, woot, woot. <laughs> so today is quads. Time check is 2.34 a.m. I'm telling you guys, I love the early morning workouts. It's a whole vibe. It's not too many people in here. I don't have to wait for machines or equipment or anything like that. I'm telling you guys, 2.30, 3 a.m. is definitely the vibe. Um, so I'm already drinking my pre-workout. I'm not feeling sore from, what did we do yesterday? Yesterday was back. My back is not sore, which is a little disappointing because I kind of am enjoying embracing the feeling of soreness. So I low-key feel like I didn't go hard enough yesterday. If that makes sense, I don't know. I kind of wish I was a little sore um, because the last back workout we did a week ago, I was definitely sore as hell. So um, just gonna finish getting myself together in the locker room real quick and then we're gonna head out and start with leg extensions. I told you guys, leg extensions are a great way to warm up, definitely gets the blood going. They're hard, it's intense and it's quad day, so why not start there? So let's get to it. It's that pause, y'all. Jesus. Okay, let's go do leg press. 
All right, so we're about to do something new. I'm still warming up for it. So what I'm going to do is 10 body weight squats. Then we're going to do 10 B stand squats on each leg. Then I'm going to add weights to the next set. So let's knock out 10 regular. Wait, hold on, music. All right, first side for B stance. Next side, 10. Oh man, I don't even know if I'm gonna go heavy. Cause that was hard, just body weight. Fuck. All right, I got a 20 pound dumbbell. God damn, hold on. Hold up. Oh, fuck. Nah. Other side. My God. And that's why I didn't go heavy. Because I already knew. All right, two more sets. I'm staying at 20. All right, set number two. Y'all, this ain't no joke. All right, regular ones first. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
Ne. Ne. Four more. Oh, man. This side is so much harder. I'm gonna take the weight off. All right, last set. Dear Lord. <laughs> All right, here we go. Maybe I'll start with my weaker side first. That made it a little easy. Fuck. All right, last time. Here we go. Three more. Mm. Last one. Ah, uh, fuck. Okay. Fuck. All right. So, still trying to catch my breath. My heart rate got to 165. That's really good. Um, there's nothing wrong with going light to get form correct, especially if it's something that you've never done before. I don't typically do B stance squats. I feel like I've only done them once before. <laughs> like, I don't do them. So I can really feel it in my quads for sure. It's definitely something I'm gonna keep incorporating in my quad day workouts, um, but it's not something that I do. So, you know, you guys normally see me do goblet squats with 80 pound dumbbells, right? Um, but today, going from the goblet to the B stance, I did a 20 pound. And that was hard as hell. It was hard as hell just doing the body weight just to warm up with it, right? So don't feel like you have to go super heavy to work out. It's always gonna be about form, especially if you know it's not something that you do. Now that I've done it, I'm confident that in 
you know, four weeks from now, I'll be well past a 20 pound dumbbell. But, you know, this is the first time that I've done it for real. So went light, definitely got a good sweat. As you guys can see, I'm drenching in sweat. Um, so that was, that, was, that was a good set. And I was gonna do leg press first, but I was like, let me get the squats out the way. <laughs> so let me get the squats out the way first. So I'm glad I did that. So that was the squat movement for the day. Now we're gonna go do leg press and then I'm not sure what's gonna be next, but quads are definitely on fire. No shame in going light. I mean, when I say go heavy, it's what's heavy for you. So, you know, for me, the 20 pound was heavy as fuck. It's always about what's heavy for you, okay? Um, as long as you are getting a good workout. I could not do that and talk. That's how I know I was getting in good quality reps. If you can still have a full-blown conversation while you're doing a particular movement, that means you're not going heavy enough. So, you know, when you're out of breath, when you're pushing yourself, y'all see I couldn't even get 12 straight. So the 20 pound was heavy for me. It's go heavy for you, all right? Let's go get these leg presses in. <sighs> I'm gonna add another 45 on each side. One more. Okay. One more set. I'm gonna stay at this weight. All right, last set. So I low key lied. I said I wasn't gonna add any more weight, but <laughs> it's just the inner lifter in me. Like I added a 10 pound plate to each side. So I had three 45 pound plates and a 10 each side. Last set. Let me set my music and we gonna knock this out real quick. Let's find a good setting for me for this leg curl. Back it up some. All right, there we go. Found it, I think. <laughs> All right. Ooh. All right, here we go. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Next set, I'm going to go heavier. Yeah, that hold at the end, that hold is always a game changer. Fuck. All right, one more set. I'm gonna go up and wait. One more, one more, one more. Ah. All right. Fuck. Okay. We're done. Let's get out of here and eat breakfast. Fuck. <laughs> all right, you guys. So I'm all showered, pretty much ready to start my day. Time to eat. I am so starving. Still on the breakfast quinoa bowl. This was the very last serving. Um, the last two days I had put pecans in it today. I put walnuts in it because I was able to go to Whole Foods yesterday and restock on walnuts, blueberries, pineapples, apples. Um, what else did I get? I don't know, but <laughs> was finally able to restock. So this is the end of the quinoa bowl. So it lasted three days. I got three breakfast meals out of it. Not sure what we're going to eat for breakfast tomorrow. Um, I'll look and see what I already have in the house and see like what I want to cook. Also, I have my glass of fresh squeezed orange juice to complete the breakfast meal. <sighs> okay. So I'm going to eat this real quick <laughs> because I noticed like when I eat and talk, my food gets cold. <laughs> I actually want to enjoy it hot. So I'm going to eat this first and then we're going to chit chat. OK, so I'll be back in like five minutes. I'm going to devour this. OK, <laughs> literally that bowl did not stand a chance. I think it only took me like three minutes to eat it all. Like that's how hungry I was. And one last thing, you guys. Yesterday, I complained about when I heated it up, I dried out the quinoa. This morning, I added soy milk to the quinoa before I microwaved it. Game changer. So if you do decide to make this recipe, add some more of the milk that you use. I use soy milk. You could use any plant-based milk or cow milk, whatever milk you choose. But make sure you add that to your bowl before you microwave. And then once it's hot, then add all of your toppings. So I did walnuts, dark chocolate chips, and blueberries. So let it get hot, then add your toppings, and then enjoy. Okay, so it's Friday. So I figured let's have a Friday pep talk, right? We're going into the weekend, and I know a lot of times people, not really myself anymore, but I still like to include myself in the discussion so that you guys don't feel like I'm talking down on you or whatever, but it's always tough love. It's always just trying to get you to see the other side of things so that you can do better, right? We're, we should all be striving to do better than we did yesterday. And I want you to realize that. I want you to realize that it's all about personal growth, self-development. You should always be learning. 
You should always be receiving new information and you should always be implementing what you learn. It's, there's no point in learning something if you're not going to do it, right? It's, the knowledge is worthless. So not only should you be learning, I'm going to say that again, not only should you be learning, you should be implementing what you learn into your daily life, okay? So it's Friday. I know a lot of you guys like to hang out with friends, like to go do whatever, have fun, and that's great. Um, you should enjoy yourself, you should have fun. But when people ask me, how do I stay so disciplined? How do I get so much done? How was I able to reach my weight loss goals, reach goals with my business? Like, how was I able to do that? It's because I'm so locked in, you guys, that I don't have a social life. Like, I don't have a social life. Like, I'm not even trying to be funny. Like, I literally do not have a social life, okay? Like, I don't have girlfriends. I don't go to happy hour. I don't go to birthday party events. Like, if it's not, like, family-related, like, I don't have that. I used to have that years ago, but I've talked about it before. Like, I had a lot of falling outs with the females that were in my life, and it it forced me to spend a lot of time by myself. At that time, just a quick little backstory so we can, you know, get an understanding. At that time, I was desperate for friends. Like, I needed friends. At least I felt like I did. I needed people to like me. I was a people pleaser. Um, I was very insecure. So because of all of that, I ended up choosing friendships with women who weren't necessarily dealing with me for my best interest. It was more so for personal gain. So that's how we ended up getting into disputes that led to us not talking and being friends anymore. Because I truly believe that if you are real friends with someone, unless someone like slept with your husband or something like that, you know what I mean? Like something super crazy. But if someone is really there for you, really has your best interests at heart, petty arguments don't turn into never talking again. That's how I really feel. So if you ever have disputes with people and the arguments were super petty and dumb and people were just in their egos, if you can't come back from that, if the other person isn't willing to talk about it, nine times out of 10, it's because they weren't really your friend in the first place. Because true friends, valuable friends, people that really love you, people that really support you, aren't going to let bitter, petty disputes destroy the bond that you built with each other, right? So that's how I realized that they weren't never really my friends in the first place, right? And it's not like I had hundreds and hundreds of friends. These are probably like, I had like maybe five friends, okay? Maybe even four, to be honest. So that's a little backstory. So because of that, you guys, I've spent the last few years just really by myself, like just really focusing. And because I don't have a whole bunch of girlfriends and things like that, I was not put into situations where I'm tempted to do things that don't align with my goals. So for example, weight loss, right? I, I truly believe, because I've tried weight loss before, you guys. This wasn't the first go around. I've been wanting to lose weight for years and years and years. I started putting on weight after college, okay? So at least eight to 10 years <laughs> of trying to lose weight. And every year I just get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So I had been trying to lose weight, but in all of those instances where I put myself on diets or I started trying to exercise, I was distracted. I was low key distracted. I had friends, I had outings to go to. I wanted to be around people. I let other people and their opinions influence what I did. I was very weak-minded back then, very weak, not disciplined. The slightest thing could throw me off mentally. Um, I had so much anxiety. It just, I just wasn't, I just wasn't mentally strong. To just keep it 100 with you guys, I was not mentally strong in my 20s, like at all. I'm 33 now. So when I started spending more time by myself and by more time, a lot of time by myself, I developed 
self-confidence, which a lot of us, especially women, we don't have. And a lot of times when you're around insecure people, because most people are insecure. Now we all have things about ourselves that we want to change or you know something that we may not like about ourselves, but there's a difference between just wanting to change that versus really being insecure about it. Like for instance, you guys compliment me on my smile. I have veneers, you guys. I hated my smile before, okay? I hated my smile, but my smile did not make me insecure. It did not make me a miserable person. It wasn't my smile that was making me miserable, right? It was the lack of, it was, it was more so not being comfortable in my own skin, not necessarily the smile <laughs> that made me insecure, if that makes sense. So when I got my teeth done, it only elevated how I already felt about myself. So there's always something that we may want to change about ourselves. But there's a difference between being around people who are not only insecure, but want to push their insecurities on you versus someone who just doesn't like something about themselves, but they still love themselves and they still are going to be there to support you and motivate you. There's, there's a big difference between the two, okay? Um, and a lot of times we end up dealing with people who don't want to support you, who don't want to motivate you, who are really insecure, and those influences of those type of people seep into your spirit, right? That's why people always say you are a reflection of the five people that you spend the most time with or that you talk to the most. And when I reflect on those five people, that's a very scary thought process because the five individuals that I was closest to were not anything that I aspired to be like. Now, if you have people in your life who you do aspire to be like, you are very, very, very blessed. You are very blessed, okay? Because most people do not have that. Most people do not have that. So if you do, if you have one or two people where you're like, wow, like, I really like how they move. They really motivate me. Like, you're doing great, okay? (laughs) Keep those people around you. Keep those people around you. But for the majority of us, we don't have that. Majority of people don't have goals. Majority of people are living day to day. And if that's what they're comfortable with doing, that's totally fine. I'm not sitting here saying that that's better than this or this is better than that. I'm just telling you what I learned about myself and my experiences in my 20s and how I got to where I am today. Because a lot of you guys talk about how did I manage to lose so much weight without any type of weight loss surgery, without any type of appetite suppressant pills or anything. I literally lost it naturally. And I truly believe that the reason why I was able to lose it this time, because I was sick and tired before, but I would always fall off the wagon. But this time was different because I was so isolated. You guys, When you are going out with your friends over the weekend, I want you to, unless all of you guys are on the same path, meaning you all want to lose weight, you all want to get more active, then that's fine. You are hanging out with like-minded people. But if that's not your reality, if you're not hanging around like-minded people, I want you to understand that when you choose to hang out with people who are not on the same path as you, who are not trying to better themselves, that seeps into your spirit. And that is a distraction. Okay. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with hanging out, going to happy hour, doing whatever, but just understand you're on a weight loss journey. So it is not in your best interest to be drinking margaritas. It is not in your best interest to be eating greasy foods. It is not in your best interest to be eating a whole bunch of sweets. It's not in your interest. And you have to understand that. If the actions that you're participating in do not align with your goals, do not get confused as to why you're not seeing the results that you want to see. This is where it gets hard. This is where discipline comes into place. You have to learn how to say no. 
I didn't know how to say no. I told you guys, I used to be a people pleaser, okay? So whatever anyone wanted me to do, as long as it wasn't illegal, I was dumb enough to do it because I just really wanted them to like me. I succumbed to peer pressure all the time because I wasn't mentally strong. I didn't value myself, okay? So when you are going week after week, let's say you work really hard Monday through Friday. Let's say you, you eat right, you work out, you, you make sure you're drinking all your water, you're getting all your sleep, like you're doing everything that you're supposed to do. But once the weekend comes, you slip up and completely fall off. You can't get confused when you're just maintaining. You might not be gaining anymore because you did put in most of that work for the week. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're losing the weight that you want to lose either. Because depending on what you're doing on a Friday night and a Saturday night, you can destroy your whole week. You really can, you guys. A lot of you guys don't realize how many calories are in all this food that you guys eat when you go out to these restaurants. That's why I always push the importance of cooking at home. When they're cooking your food, they're piling so much grease onto your food. One tablespoon of olive oil, one little tablespoon, is 120 calories. They're using way more than one tablespoon of grease when they're cooking your fajitas or whatever it is that you're eating. When you eat at home, you can monitor all of that. Then you guys want to get margaritas full of sugar. And most of the time, you're getting more than one. So yes, you can destroy your progress in that in those few hours of instant gratification because you can't say no to going somewhere you have to understand you either want it or you don't you either want it or you don't and a lot of times if you want something that badly you have to sacrifice how you used to live so that you can live the life that you want to live okay so when you guys are like wow, you lost all that weight. That's because I was willing to make changes in my life so that I could be here today, okay? A lot of people are not willing to make those changes or they think they're ready until it's time to actually do it, right? You're always like, okay, yeah, I'm going to work out come Monday and da 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 and I signed up for a gym membership and woo dee woo Then when it's time to actually eat the food, then when it's time to actually go to the gym and work out, not just hang out in the parking lot, not just talk to your friends that you see there, when it's actually time to do something, you're not really doing it. You have to decide, we're going into the weekend. A lot of people are off on the weekends. A lot of people wanna have fun on the weekends. Is Are those couple of hours of fun really worth all of the work that you put in the, the entire week. From Monday to Friday, so for five days, you did a great job. You ate right, you worked out, you got your sleep, you stayed focused for five days. Are a couple of hours on a Friday night really worth all of that hard work you put in? No, it's not. And if you're not at the point in your journey where you can resist, then you shouldn't go. You should say no. For instance, I'm vegan. I've been vegan for a year and a half now, so I don't eat any animal product. So no meat, no dairy, no seafood. When I first started my vegan journey, I was still trying to resist temptation of meat products because I've been eating meat my entire life. So being around people who are eating meat, <laughs> right? Who are eating bacon and eggs, that's gonna be a lot harder for me to resist in the beginning stages because I'm trying to get away from that. Now, that doesn't bother me. I, I'm not gonna touch it. But when you're first starting, you're your weakest. It's new to you. It hasn't really become a habit yet. It hasn't become a routine. It hasn't really become who you are. So when you're in the beginning stages, 
you have to understand, sometimes you just have to say, no, I can't go. Or this doesn't align with who I'm trying to be. When I, I used to be a very heavy drinker, very heavy drinker. I used to drink every single day for years, for years, every single day. When I decided to stop drinking, I haven't had a drink in two years. I consider myself a non-drinker, so I don't drink. It's not like, oh, I only drink socially. No, I don't drink at all, okay? I don't drink at all. I do not drink. But when I first started that, I couldn't be around people or go to events where there was going to be alcohol because I'm trying to not drink anymore and I'm not mentally strong enough yet to resist a drink. Now, was I alcoholic? That's debatable. <laughs> I was never diagnosed as one, okay? But if, you, if, if I tell you guys what I used to do, you might think in your head, okay, yeah, she was definitely an alcoholic, right? That's neither here nor there. I don't know. <laughs> Did I have a drinking problem? Yes. Was I alcoholic? That's a very strong word. <laughs> but anyways, so when I first started trying to stop drinking, I never had like withdrawals or feeling sick. It, it wasn't any of that. That's why I'm like, I don't know. But regardless, when I first started trying not to drink anymore, I didn't want to be around alcohol because... I wasn't mentally strong enough. I didn't, I didn't know if I was mentally strong enough to resist a drink, right? Every time I would go out, I had to order a drink. Every time. Like, there was never going to a restaurant without getting a drink. Like, if there's alcohol on the menu, best believe I'm going to order, okay? So, over time, as I got stronger, as I got more used to not drinking, now I can be around people who drink and not feel the urge or the desire to want to drink. It doesn't phase me. But at the beginning stages, it would have. So in order to reach my goals, if I knew there was going to be alcohol around or if I knew that the people I was going to go with were going to drink, I wouldn't go because I'm trying to not drink anymore. And drinking does not align with the goals that I have, which is not drinking, right? So you have to make a choice in your life. Are you going to continue to do what you've been used to doing, which is not who you want to be anymore, but yet you can't resist the urge to continue to be the person that you are? Or are you going to turn a new leaf and make the decision that I don't want to be that person anymore. I want to do something different. So if people or places do not align with who I want to be, then I'm not going to go. You have to decide that for yourself. But whatever you decide, I want you guys to realize that that is why you are or are not seeing the results that you desire. If you can't say no, don't get confused. Don't get mad when you're not reaching your goals. You have no one to blame but yourself. A lot of times we want to blame other people. We want to blame our situations. Oh, I can't do this because of this. I can't do this because of that person. No. No. You can't do what you want to do because of you. It has nothing to do with anyone else. It's because of you. It's because you can't fight your own battles. It's because you can't, you can't fight your temptation. You can't fight your vices. If you know you have an eating problem, if you know that you can't resist chocolate, <laughs> if you know you can't resist soda, why are you going to go to an environment where there's going to be that when you're trying to get off of that? Food is a drug, you guys. Food is definitely a drug. It's probably the worst one because it's all around us. You can't even go five minutes down the street without being tempted by Wendy's and McDonald's and Burger King and Wawa. You can't go anywhere, honestly, without crappy food right in front of your face. 
So it's hard, but your willpower has to be stronger than that. And the more you resist, the more you don't cave, you get mentally stronger and more disciplined. There's no, people say, oh, well, there's a balance. I don't believe that there is. I don't think there is a balance. You either are or you're not. You either want to start a business or you don't. You either want to get a degree or you don't. There's no in between. There's no, well, I kind of do. Then you don't. If you have this idea to want to go and get your master's degree, you're either going to do it or you're not. You can't halfway do it. You can't halfway sign up for classes. <laughs> you're either going to sign up and do it or you're going to sign up and waste your money. But it didn't get done. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I, I always say to you guys too, do something that you like because then it doesn't feel like you're depriving yourself. So when you choose foods to eat, don't just eat boring salads, unless you like salads. <laughs> I don't like salads, so to me they're boring, right? If you truly enjoy salads, then eat them. But you resisting other foods is not gonna be difficult for you most of the time because you enjoy the food that you're currently eating. You get what I'm saying? It'd be different if you know, all the meals that you have in your fridge to cook are bland and you don't like them, then yeah, you're going to be more tempted to want to go and get fast food or, you know what I mean? Because you're not really enjoying what you're doing at home, okay? So always do something that you like. Eat what you like as long as it's healthy. Find healthier versions. I want you guys to enjoy your food. I want you to enjoy the process. Now, that's not saying it's going to always be easy because it's not. It's still going to be challenging, but it'll be easier because you are happy with what you're doing. You get what I'm saying? So just make wise choices, you guys. We're going into the weekend, and I don't want you guys to destroy the progress that you've made. You've come a long way. And a few hours of fun is not worth all of the hard work you put into it this whole week or this whole month, okay? You have to get in the mindset of there's no in-between, okay? Especially if you're just starting your journey. If you've been on your journey for several years, you can go to a restaurant and not go crazy, right? Like, that's nothing to you because... Like I said, it's become who you are at this point. But when you're first starting, and it's not a habit, it's not a routine yet, it's not your DNA, just don't be afraid to say, I can't go, or not this weekend. That doesn't mean you'll never go. That doesn't mean you'll never have fun, right? It's just right now your goals mean more to you than a few hours of fun, right? So I hope you guys take into consideration what we talked about this morning. It is now almost seven o'clock. The sun is coming up <laughs> and I am just now starting my day. I love morning workouts, you guys. It is a whole vibe. I really feel like I'm, I got a leg up because it's like everyone's getting up now and I'm already up, energized, worked out. Like, I don't know. I just, I really like AM workouts. Yes, it's hard to get up. Sometimes it is hard to get up, but once you get used to it, it becomes easier and easier, like with anything that you do, okay? So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys check out some of my other videos. I have lots of different videos, vlogs, all that stuff. Make sure you guys thumbs up, write a comment, subscribe if you have not already, and share this video with someone that's close to you who you think could benefit from this information. And I think that's it, you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow is chest. Wow, it's chest again. <laughs> I feel like these days just keep coming quickly. Okay, yeah, I think tomorrow is, I don't know what tomorrow is. I got to look. Whatever it is, I'll see you guys there. <laughs> Bye. Have a great Friday.